Hey there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Now, as you can see on the side here, today's not really a BIM Dynamo Revit style tutorial. It's pretty off the beaten track today. Um, have I gone crazy? No. So, I was actually getting ready to participate in a web panel the other day and we had a pre-meeting. And someone asked the question, where did you all learn to program? And immediately I was like, oh, sure, Dynamo, my first programming program in AEC. But I thought, well, I was sort of programming before I worked in AEC, just a bit of fun programming on the side. And I remembered my days of working in the game Warcraft 3 no, no, no. in a world editor that let us build custom games. And I realized that I actually learned a lot of programming concepts before I really looked at programming properly in AEC. So I thought it'd be really fun today just to show you how I used to program in, in here and also some of the things that I built back in the day. Um, so I know it's a little bit different to the normal video format, so you don't have to watch it, it's okay, it's up to you, but um, hopefully some of you find this interesting. Anyway, let's jump in. Uh, so this is pretty much where I learned to program when I was younger, um, at least the concepts of programming. It might seem a little bit silly, but uh, I'm not kidding. Uh, I used to build maps in this program, um, now Warcraft 3 Reforged, unfortunately. Uh, but back in the day, Warcraft 3 Classic. And we had this really awesome program called the World Editor that let us build custom maps in Warcraft. And the best thing about this thing is not only did it let us build maps, like, you know, we can go and, you know, add cliffs and do all sorts of weird stuff, but, you know, I can, I don't know, I'm trying to remember exactly how, how this even worked. You can, you know, muck around with the terrain, but you can also add cliffs, I think, as well. Somewhere in here is cliffs. Um, there we go. You can go and build a map essentially um, you can chuck down doodads and all sorts of silly objects but um, more importantly it let you build what was called triggers um, which let you essentially program an entire map so let's just throw down a starting point and I'm going to put down a bunch of peasants and a footman so this was what we used, what we call the trigger editor now at the moment there's an initialization trigger that starts off a game I'm going to get rid of that and I'm just going to build a trigger called um, peasant is oppressed and I'm going to make an event and in this case I'm going to say that a unit the generic unit event a unit is attacked because they're being oppressed in this case I'm going to check the unit type and I'm going to say the unit type of that that unit being attacked in this case uh, attacked unit is equal to a peasant I'm going to make sure that the element doing it, um, doing the oppressing isn't a peasant. So I'm going to say, what's the type of the attacking unit? And, and obviously this probably seems nice and zany and silly, um, but it's sort of showing you principles that I use in things like Dynamo, like not equal to and Booleans and conditions and like if then else almost. This is really like a if then else um, in some respects. And then I'm just going to say as the action, um, I'm going to play a noise. <laughs> so in this case, I believe there's a sound under somewhere in here under environment. I think it is. Uh, wow, I haven't I haven't played this for such a long time, but it was it was super fun back in the day. Maybe it's under sound. The thing is too, they they've changed it so like everything's out of order now as well. Um, nothing's in alphabetical order. There we go. Here we want to play a sound. And I'm just going to find this sound, play sound on unit. And in this case, I'm going to have to pick a sound to play. So I'm going to have to go and load a sound first. So I think under the sound editor, um, we had all the sounds of the units in the game. Um, so in this case, I believe there's a human and there's a peasant. And somewhere in here, they, they're saying they're being oppressed. So I'm not sure which one it is. I think it might be... The horse kicked me once. How it hurt. I'm being repressed. Here it is. We found a witch. May we burn her? Help, help. I'm being repressed. I mean, obviously, this was a fun game. We, we mucked around a lot in this game, but I'm just going to make... <laughs> I'm just going to add this as a sound. Um, you know, this, this game was so much fun back in the day. Just, just being back here is um, bringing back so many memories. Um, but yeah, learning to learning to, to code here was very fun. And it sort of takes you back to the point I always make that, you know, if coding is fun, you, you learn uh, more easily. But I'll say that the attack unit's gonna say they're being oppressed. <laughs> and yeah, I'll do that. So in this case, we're just gonna make a map where all the peasants say they're being oppressed when you attack them. 
Um, so Warcraft 3 was obviously a bit of a violent game. It wasn't necessarily one where everyone goes and hugs and bees friendly. It's not as friendly as Dynamo. Um, but, you know, for someone that was in their late teens, obviously this was a more fun way to learn to program. What do you need? Help! Help! I'm being I'm replaced! Twice! Help! Help! I'm being I'm replaced! Right. <laughs> Help, help. So you can I'm see that crossed. you know the triggers are quite easy to set up. Help, help. I'm being repressed. <laughs> and fun to watch as well. Um, so that was sort of like a little taste of how I used to program in Warcraft. But I mean, I used to go pretty deep on this. So if anyone's ever played Diablo 2 by Blizzard, I actually rebuilt this entire game, um, at least the first act, uh, inside the world editor. Um, and I learned a lot about programming here as well. I sort of learned about object manipulation and managing lists of elements or groups of units, as you might say in Warcraft, because um, everything had like equivalency in the world editor to how you'd program typically. So obviously I've built a, a full map, um, it, it, it's huge. And I'm just gonna go and place down some items to level me up really quickly so that I can show you more um, in less time. And then I'll show you a couple of the more advanced things that I used to program because obviously I showed you a very basic trigger. Um, the triggers that we built for real maps, um, these were like the real thing. So that was like a very simple trigger. That might be like just a, a global trigger that manages something if it ever happens. Because if the unit ever gets attacked, it says the noise, that's pretty much it. Um, but in this case, this is a real map. Um, it used to take like 10 minutes to load and now on a good computer, it's gonna take like 10 seconds. So it's crazy how much com uh, computer power has increased uh, by then as well. I'm probably just gonna pick, um, I'll pick the Druid. I used to like playing as the Druid. And let's just go and score some levels. So the reason why I rebuilt this game is that Diablo 2 was an isometric game and it wasn't truly 3D. So I really wanted to see this game in 3D and as a result I just I just built it. I'll go pick up a quest. Um, but already you can just see everything looks pretty different. It's very customized. Um, there's messages being played which is a trigger. Uh, I'm just going to grab some abilities. So each class essentially had like three trees of abilities that you learn. In this case, um, I'll use a couple of fun little abilities, like a firestorm that shoots out three things. So I essentially programmed those elements to shoot out from positions and tell them where to move to. I have a system where you can transform him into a, a werewolf. Um, unfortunately, some of the things don't work anymore because um, they've changed the game in the Reforged Edition. And you could summon allies when you were just in human form. So in this case, I am going to try and... I'll have to wait until I'm outside my werebear form, unfortunately. Um, but you can do things like stomp the ground, so it was pretty fun. Um, and eventually we should see some items get dropped as well, um, which essentially will allow me to, to use some different abilities where I can summon, summon some allies. So let's summon some ravens. So these actually created other units um, for me. So th there was a lot of things that happened in the game. I even programmed custom systems that went outside the rules of the game. So for example, um, I programmed a potions belt that was separate from the unit. So rather than holding all your items because you were limited to six, I created extra units that passed items and effects to the main character. So off the map, there's an extra unit and there's triggers that explain when I run, when that unit uses a potion, heal my character. So it was pretty, um, pretty wacky, the things I used to get up to here. Um, there was things like summoning different things. So I've got like some, some wolves I can summon as well. Um, in this case, they look more like dogs in the remake. Um, so. It was really fun. Um, there was items I could pick up, for example, these greaves. So I had a system that stopped you from picking up more than one pair of shoes. Because in the original Warcraft, you could pick up 20 pairs of shoes and well, you, could, you could pick up six. And they could all just be shoes, um, which is, you know, silly as. I can summon a grizzly bear here. And then eventually I'll just, um, I'll wait. I'll, I'll try and find a way to heal just a little bit of mana. I think she might heal my mana if I remember right. No, she doesn't. Bummer. Uh, I just need to get a mana potion. And then I'll just show you a really fun ability I added for this guy um, that creates like a hurricane on top of him. I'll go in this cave. So you could program things to be moved as well. So that doesn't actually take you into a cave. That just moves you off the map to another location um, where you can see, see more. So it was all about creating the illusion of a game um, by building little scripts and events. And behind the scenes, there's like, you know, hundreds of things always running. Here we go, I'll make the hurricane start up. Yeah. 
So, and then anything I go near essentially gets damaged by the hurricane. So, this is so much fun. Um, but yeah, I'll probably, rather than play this for another hour or two, I'll probably just, um, just close it for now. But I might put this game on my GitHub just for fun. So I'll show you some of the triggers behind the scenes of what, what was actually happening there. Um, so, I mean, obviously there are a lot of things happening just to make the game run in the first place. Um, for example, just starting off the game, establishing variables. These are just establishing variables. All of that. Just the process. Because we used to store things inside variables. Um, so it, it's pretty intense. Um, an entrance, for example. So when I went into that, that cave, um, I was essentially saying if, if a unit comes within 200 uh, units of an entrance unit, so there's actually a little character sitting here that's invisible, um, this trigger will essentially pick that up. And assuming that the triggering unit is a hero, which is basically a good guy in the game, um, then it will essentially move the unit somewhere else and move the camera with you. Some of the more complex things I was doing, for example, like that firestorm uh, that I cast, which shot three pieces of fire out. Um, I'll just try and find that. So in this case, I start an ability. The ability is firestorm. I created three invisible units that would shoot out fire um, in three directions. And essentially you can't see them, but it's three units that are shooting it. So you're not actually moving all that fire yourself. But what you're doing is creating events that react to things and essentially create units to do it for you. Um, but really what was happening here is just the event condition action is really what it taught me. Um, but yeah, I thought that would be a little funny video just to share. Uh, just for a little bit of a change of pace. And if any of you used to play Warcraft 3 or, you know, built custom maps, let me know too. Um, or, or if you used other types of gaming engines that taught you, maybe like CryEngine um, that taught people about Crisis. Um, but there we go. Just a bit of fun today. So there we go. Um, if anyone made it this far, I guess you must probably have enjoyed that. Um, I'm not going to become a pro game streamer on this channel anytime soon. Don't worry. I'll be back with Revit, Dynamo, the good stuff next week. I uh, just wanted to make that for a bit of fun and, and also for me too because I was sort of reminiscing there on something that I used to enjoy when I was a lot younger uh, and probably still would if I had the time to and if the uh, Warcraft 3 Reforged remake wasn't such a, a hot mess. Um, anyway, <laughs> if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. There's probably not going to be too many Warcraft 3 focused videos in future, um, but at the same time, you know, if there's enough people that really want to see that, I guess I'll make a channel for it. Uh, but I'll see you in future for more BIM tutorials. Anyway, thanks. Take care. Bye.